God. Good morning. Glad you're here. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The Lord is good, 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 good. Amen. Praise God. We have so much to be grateful and thankful for, don't we? Praise God. Well, we're continuing in this series of faith, and uh, last week we, uh, the subtitle was Faith to Thrive, right? Faith to Thrive. And as Christians, God's Word has been given to us not to just survive, right, but to thrive. Amen. And we're going to look at this again in the Word, and uh, you'll be blessed by it. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for your Word. We thank you for your anointing that removes burdens. It destroys yokes of bondage in people's lives. And your anointing is power. Thank you, Lord, that the power of the living God is present in here today in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, that you speak through me, think through my mind, that this word comes forth unhindered and uninterrupted by any satanic or demonic force in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, that you've given us ears to hear and hearts to understand. Lord, I thank you that revelation knowledge flows freely in this place, providing for us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, enabling us to do what we could not do on our own, but to do great and mighty works. And I thank you, Lord, that signs, wonders, and miracles follow the word preached today in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Wasn't that a wonderful special? Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> I've been looking forward to that for weeks. I knew that they were going to, uh, to sing, and I just, I'm so blessed each time that you all take the, the stage and, and not even, you don't even have to take the stage. I mean, you can just, they just sing over the phone, happy birthday, and it blesses me. Praise God. You can just tell the anointing on their voices. Amen. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. Hallelujah. You know, and if that didn't touch you, I say your wood is really wet. <laughs> but you know what? The fire of God's here, and if, even if your wood's as wet as it can be, you're going to dry out and you're going to catch fire today. Praise God. Hallelujah. You have your Bible? Go to Romans chapter 1, verse 16, please. Praise God. You know, I received reports of miracles this week. Hallelujah. You should rejoice when others rejoice. Amen. Praise God. I said, I, re I, re I received reports of miracles that took place in people's lives this week. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. God is a miracle working God. And his works aren't, aren't, aren't done, aren't complete, aren't finished, you know, forever. No, the, his works are still happening in the earth today. Amen. Praise God. I'm telling you, it just excites me to hear the reports that come in. You know, I had a, a young lady call me, and, uh, and I shared this on Thursday, but I believe it goes for uh, sharing again today. And she was here last Sunday, and last Sunday we had, a, you know, a, a powerful service. And uh, she said, you know, I stood there, I wanted to, like, I, I just didn't feel anything. And I wanted to, but I just didn't feel anything. And... She left the service and was, the, you know, the enemy begins to work on you when, you when you're in an atmosphere of people worshiping and praising God and it's powerful and yet you don't feel like you feel anything and left and thought, you know what, what is wrong with you? The enemy started working on her. What is wrong with you? You know, everybody else seemed to get it, but you didn't get it. And she thought, no, it's not based on a feeling. She said, Pastor, you've taught me it's not based on what I felt. It's not based on what, how my flesh reacted. She said, I wanted to react. I wanted to kind of get it, but I just didn't. But I thought, I'm not going to leave there thinking I didn't get it. Because you, you, the word of the Lord came and said, I'm going to the other side. Amen. Do you remember that? And so she went to work Monday morning and told her boss, I'm going to the other side. The boss looked at her like, okay. What does that mean? <laughs> and only if you knew her boss. <laughs> oh, oh, okay, all right. And she then pro proclaimed, she said, you know what? If Jesus and disciples wouldn't have went to the other side, there was a mad man that was loose, and he was just running wild, terrorizing people. 
And she said, if, if Jesus and those disciples wouldn't, wouldn't have went to the other side, he would have continued to terrorize that entire coast. And her boss said, you know, I never thought of that. <laughs> and she said the next day, what she had been believing for, what had been the biggest thing in her life, what had been the biggest mountain and obstacle in her life, it was a financial thing, and she had called me and talked to me, and we prayed about it, she got her breakthrough. She got to the other side. Praise God. Praise God. It was miraculous. It was something out of the ordinary. It was extraordinary. Amen? And I'm telling you, God can and will do extraordinary things in your life. And even if you might be here and going, you know, I didn't feel what they felt. You don't let go. You hold on with your faith. You continue to proclaim it out of your mouth. And that's what she did. She went to work and proclaimed it to her boss and felt awkward doing it. But she did it because she wasn't going to leave there thinking there was something wrong with her. Amen. She was holding on to it by faith and she received her breakthrough. Amen. She said, she called me up. She said, Pastor, do you have time for a testimony? I said, always. <laughs> and she said, I went to the other side. And I know what that meant. You know what her other side was. She goes, I went to the other side. And I remembered she a few weeks ago for prayer. She made it to the other side. Praise Hallelujah. Praise, Praise God. God. You're going to the other side. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. From victory to victory. Faith to faith, right? Well, let's read here in Romans chapter 1, verse 16 says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. Say it again, I'm a believer. I'm a believer. Jeff had you say that earlier, and you need to remind yourself, I am a believer. I am a believer. Praise God, and I believe God's word. I believe what God's Word says about me. And I believe what God's Word says for me. Amen. Say it again. I'm a believer. I'm a believer. It says to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed. Say revealed. revealed. And that's what's going to happen today. As the Word of God's coming forth, there's things that are going to be revealed to you. Amen. Amen. Say revealed again. Revealed. You see, what happens here is when, when you come to church things should be revealed to you, all right? Revealed to you, um, things will be revealed about you for your own life, okay? God will reveal things in your, in your life that you need to know and you need to hear for you. He'll reveal things to you. Areas that you've had struggles and challenges and things like that, God will reveal to you those areas in your life that you perhaps need to make change and correction, Okay? That's what the Holy Spirit will do. He will also reveal His Word to you. The Word of God, as I'm, come, as I'm ministering God's Word, God's Word will be revealed to you in a way to give you spiritual understanding, insight, concepts, and knowledge so you know what God is saying to you through His Word. Did you get that? Because the, God, the Bible, I've said this before, you've heard, is a coded book. Amen. And the believer has access to this word to be revealed to them. The ungodly can read the Bible and really not get much out of it, but the believer can read the Bible and get tremendous value and riches out of it. Hallelujah. And it says, For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. Say that with me. From faith to faith. Now, we're teaching on faith, okay? So from faith to faith. How the Word of God, how the gospel is revealed to us and for us is by us looking at it by faith. Okay? I mean, you've got to look at the Bible and go, by faith, I receive what that says right there. Because your mind goes, tick, 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 and all the wheels don't mesh and line up like they're supposed to. All of a sudden, can't, can't, you know, you don't quite get it. Well, when you receive it by faith, you go, you know what? The Bible says that, I receive it. Just like that lady, when she left here Sunday, said, you know, I didn't feel anything. It didn't seem like I got it. But she refused to leave here thinking, I didn't get it, and there's something wrong with me. Say, there's nothing wrong with me. That's a trick of the enemy to make you think there's something wrong with you. Boy, that was for somebody right there. Hallelujah. 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 
When you're born again, God looks at you and goes, oh yeah, now I got something to work with. We're, we're, we're out. There, we're back. All right, from faith to faith, right? As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Say that with me. The just shall live by faith. Now, I, I've said this for two weeks now, but as Christians, we should desire to grow. We should desire to increase. We should desire to develop in our spiritual life, right? We should have a great desire. And, and if you're lacking that desire, you need to check yourself, okay? You can call this your spiritual appetite, okay? Amen. Amen. If your spiritual appetite is not there, there's something wrong, okay? Now, I'm not saying there's something wrong with you, but there's something wrong in your life. You got something out of place, something out of order. You got priorities in the wrong place. So what I'm telling you is, is to get into the Word of God, begin to, uh, I'll say, eat on the Word of God, develop, you know, nourish yourself on the Word of God, and you'll see that spiritual appetite begin to come back and increase, okay? It's just like in the natural. If natural, all of a sudden you don't have an appetite for a day, two days, three days, a week, and you haven't hardly eaten in a week, typically you begin to check yourself, right? Going, okay, why am I not, why am I not hungry? Right? Well, you shouldn't go days and weeks without feeding on the Word of God. Jesus said, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Right? So what he's saying is that, you know, hey, our, our life and what sustains our life is not by food, physical food alone, but it's by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So God's word gives us spiritual nourishment, doesn't it? In fact, it gives us life. Amen. And so I said what God's word does as we receive the word, as we read the word, as we study and meditate on the word, is God's word produces in us what I call a spiritual confidence. Say spiritual confidence. It produces a spiritual confidence in us, and I would call that spiritual confidence faith. Faith for what? Faith to do what is uncommon. Faith to do what is unnatural. Faith to do what others say can't be done. Okay? Faith to do what, what natural, physical things say you can't do. Faith to do even beyond that. Amen. Hallelujah. Faith to do what you don't feel like you can do. Faith to do what you don't feel like you want to do. Ooh. That was for some of you. Faith to do what you feel like you don't want to do. See, when you hear from God and God places you in a place, God will give you the faith to stay there. And God will give you the faith to flourish there. Say, that's for me, Pastor. Just receive it. Come on. Go ahead and take it. Take it. Amen. Now, people, if you're, cons if you're consistently around um, those who have a negative impact on your faith and on the development of your faith, I would encourage you to get some, around some people that will encourage you in your faith walk. Amen. Because that is very important for our lives, to be around those who encourage your faith walk. Amen. And uh, I said, we looked in the scriptures last week in 1 Peter, right, that said um, that as, as we go and as we walk in our daily life, in 1 Peter there, it says that we have an adversary, right? In fact, go ahead and go there, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. 1 Peter 5, 8. You have an enemy that is against you, and you need to know that, okay? 1 Peter 5, 8. Let's read that together. It's on the board. Ready? Read. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, stop. Who's your adversary? Is it God? Is it uh, your boss? Is it anybody else? Who's your adversary? So you have an adversary, don't you? And it's the devil, right? You say, well, yeah, but my, you don't know. <laughs> my boss acts like the devil sometimes. <laughs> don't you dare say your husband or wife acts like the devil. I'd at least keep it out of the house when I make these references. <laughs> Jeannie, know that you do have an adversary, and your adversary is the devil, okay? 
Let's keep reading. Ready, read. As a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. So he's seeking whom he may devour. Right? He's seeking whom he may devour. And if you know anything, if you've watched uh, Mutual of Omaha, <laughs> remember that a long time ago, so <laughs> you have no idea what I'm talking about. If you watch these shows where they show, for example, a lion, they don't go after the strong. They go after the weak. They go after those who are slow, those who are maybe not in the strength that they should have. So you see what the enemy does as he tries to lure you away from church, lure you away from the Word, lure you away from your time of prayer. He'll, he'll put all kinds of entertainment things, all kinds of things, you know. He doesn't care if you exercise your brains out and you have biceps the size of bowling balls, okay, as long as you don't feed your spiritual man. Because the moment you begin to feed your spiritual man, then what happens, now you have spiritual strength to stand against him. You can have all the strength physically in the world, but if you don't have spiritual strength, you are weak. Now, I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with exercise, but what I'm saying is the enemy will use anything. He's very clever in how he tries. Some people just want to exercise their mind. They want to read intellectually and become these intellectual giants, if you will, and then they begin to reason and begin to think that I've got so much knowledge and I am so much smarter than so many people that I, I'm just I'm, to the point that they almost think they're smarter than God. And I'm telling you, those people fall too. We've got to have the knowledge of God's Word. We've got to be nourished and built up in the things of God in here. We have to have a priority on our life because there is an adversary who is the devil and he's seeking whom he may devour. And if you are not spiritually strong, you are weak. Say amen to that. Hallelujah. And people never stand against their adversary if they think that everything that happens to them is God trying to teach them something. Okay? I said they never stand against their adversary, the devil. If they think that it's God trying to teach them something every time they have something that happens uh, negatively in their life. We need to be wise to that. We need to know that, right? We need to know who our adversary is. It is the devil. Jesus described our adversary as a thief, didn't he? Jeff made reference to this thief in book, uh, this morning. And in the book of John, uh, verse 10, uh, chapter 10, verse 10, it says, Jesus says, The thief cometh but to do what? You know it. And destroy. He said, but I, and I, Jesus, who is a representation of God the Father, right? He said, I am come that you may have life and that you may have life more abundantly. Amen. So we need to know this. As Christians, we need to know this. We do have an adversary, but we have a Savior. Amen. Amen. There is a devil, but there is Jesus. Amen. And we need to know that we are on Jesus' side, and Jesus is on our side. God is a good God. Hallelujah. Praise God. And we looked in Mark chapter 9, verse 39. Jesus and disciples were going from one side of the lake to the other side of the lake, right? They were going to the other side. And we talked about how there was a man that was possessed with devils and demons. And, and he was over there and terrorizing people. And they couldn't physically bind him. They would put him in chains. And they would put him in shackles. And they would, he would rip these things off of him. And they could not control this man. And he was cutting himself, right? And he was terrorizing. And he was naked. And he, was, he, would li he lived among the tombs around the dead. Dead, right? And that's why I said we shouldn't gravitate to things of death, right? Skulls and all those things that are darkness and think it's funny and it's, and it's innocent. No, see what that is, it's an attraction that Satan tries to use to lure people into things that signify death. That is not, that is not of God. I said that is not of God. Oh, pastor, you're going too far. That's a little, no, I'm not going too far. You need to know. We don't need to associate with death. We associate with life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, some of you got some t-shirts to throw away. Hallelujah. Amen. What happened? Jesus, he's, he's in the boat with the disciples, right? And he tells his disciples what they're, what, what they're to do before they go. He says, 
Let's go in the boat. Let's go to the other side, right? You know the story. I don't mean to take too much time on it, but a great storm arose, right? Say great storm. And you know, Jesus, they wake up Jesus. Jesus is asleep. Jesus is asleep. There's a great storm. Jesus is asleep. You ever feel like, don't raise your hand, <laughs> like Jesus is asleep when you're going through a great storm? He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you, even to the ends of the earth. And you can stand up in the face of adversity, in the, in the face of a great storm that you're dealing with, and you can proclaim faith just as Jesus did. Because as soon as Jesus did it, he turned to his disciples and asked where their faith was, right? He wanted to know how come they didn't do it. Why? Because Jesus wasn't here as a show-off. Jesus was here as a teacher. And he was teaching these disciples how that they could behave like he was behaving and how they could do what he was doing, right? And that's the purpose of what he was doing. Amen. Glory to God. And some would say, well, you know, that storm sure made them stronger. No, that storm was sent by Satan to destroy their faith and to kill them. It was sent to kill, steal, and destroy. And uh, it's not the storm that's making you stronger. It's what you do in it, right? Amen. Amen. I said, it's not the storm that makes you stronger. It's what you do in it. And you know what? You know, how, you know how you respond in the storm? Preparation before the storm. You being here is preparation. Amen. Why? Because the Bible talks about Luke 6, 46, talks about how, I'll show you whom he's like. He's a man who, who hears my sayings, who comes to me, hears my saying, and does what I tell him to do, right? And follows the word of God. He says, when the storms come, and the wind beats vehemently upon this house, and the water comes upon this house, he said it cannot be shaken because it's founded on a rock, right? So it doesn't say that you're exempt from storms just because you go to church, right? It doesn't say that just because you're a Christian that everything is going to just be hunky-dory perfect. No, what Christianity does for the believer is it gives them the understanding of the authority that they have through Jesus Christ. And that's what the devil doesn't want you to know. Your adversary doesn't want you to know that you have spiritual strength and victory through this word of God. And there's so much more to know, folks. I said there's so much more to know here. The word is rich. We have not exhausted the depths of the word. Amen. Praise God. And you know, in life, we shouldn't have this mentality and idea of just trying to make it through another day. Because that is a trick and a trap of the devil. That is what I described last week as a life that is just surviving. And without faith, you can't operate on the level that God intended you to operate on. That's why I'm teaching you faith, because I believe being born again and filled with the Spirit is of the utmost importance, and I believe walking and living by faith and understanding faith is next in line to those two things. Amen. And a person that doesn't learn to live by faith will be a survivor. And God does not desire for you to just survive in this earth. God desires for his children, the children of God, to thrive. I said to thrive. You say, well, I'm not thriving. Well, you don't know all there is to know yet then. Amen. Well, what are you, what are you saying? I'm saying you need to know more of, who, of who, who God's created you to be and what he's provided for you to have. And, and you need to know how to access over 32,000 promises that are in this word. Amen. Because God said they're yes and amen. So be it, they're for you. Amen. Now, a believer can live a life where they flourish. Right? Well, okay, I got two of you. My wife is one of them. So our house, we're going to thrive. I said, I'll say it again, I'll give you another chance. Chances, right? A believer can live a life where they can flourish. All right, I got more of you. 
Hallelujah. This isn't a life where you barely make ends meet. This is a life of more than enough. Now, some people get uncomfortable when I talk about this stuff, but you know what? That's why you're here. Amen. And I'm not just talking about material things, but it would include material things because God didn't, didn't, wasn't short with his hand where Abraham was concerned. The Bible says that we read this Thursday that God made him very rich in cattle, silver, and gold. Amen? He had plenty. He had more than enough. Right? And the Bible in, in, in Galatians chapter 3 says that the, that the same blessing, so that the blessing of Abraham says that, first of all, it says that we're redeemed from the curse, right? He says, so that the blessing of Abraham might come on you. Amen? And that blessing of Abraham, Abraham was blessed in every area of his life. And God said, y'all yeah, make a great nation of you, great nation, not just a nation, a great nation. And I'll make your name great. God was promoting him to the lifestyles of the rich and famous. And Robin Leach wasn't even around. <laughs> but that was God's idea because God wanted to make a covenant with man. And God made a covenant with Abraham, didn't he? And God showed himself strong and showed him showed man how God can bless a man, right? And man could have lack have, have no lack when that blessings in their life. All right? And Lot you see Lot was a beneficiary of that blessing. Well, the same is true about this story in the book of Mark where they're going to the other side. And last week we looked at it and we said that there were other little ships. Well, guess what? When those winds ceased and those waves stopped, when he said, peace be still, those other little ships, guess what? It became calm for them too. See, when you stand up and exercise your authority as a believer, amen, Others benefit from it, too. And we should be doing this, shouldn't we? We should do it in our home. We should do it in our neighborhoods. We should do it in our schools, in our apartment complexes, right? At, at work, we should be operating in this kind of authority in the earth today. Glory to God. Amen? Go to Psalms 92, 12, New Living Translation. If not, you can look on the board. Hallelujah. Psalms 92, 12. Let's look at it together and read it together. Ready, read. But the godly will flourish like palm trees and grow strong like the cedars of Lebanon. Praise the Lord. Glory. Verse 13, let's read. For they are transplanted to the Lord's own house. They flourish in the courts of our God. The godly will flourish. Are you godly? You're to flourish. Amen. They shall flourish in the courts of God. Proverbs eleven twenty eight says, Trust in your money and go d down you go. But the godly flourish like leaves in the spring. Amen. Proverbs fourteen eleven says, The house of the wicked will be destroyed, but the tent of the godly will flourish. Say, My life and my household shall flourish. Psalms 23, 5 says, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. Glory to God. Say more than enough. Now, I made this comment, and I want to make it again, that everything in the kingdom of God is either accessed or activated by faith. Everything in the kingdom of God is either accessed or activated by faith. So if you want to get some things activated in your life, you got to do it by faith. So you see these promises in the Word here, right? And you hear me preaching these messages. They are activated and they are accessed by faith. Amen. Not a feeling, a faith, right? Hallelujah. Amen? Now... In Judges chapter 6, we looked at, and I, I wasn't planning on going here because we've, we've talked about Gideon for three weeks, but guess what? We could talk about him another week, right? Amen? In Judges chapter uh, 6, 
we looked at, and you, you can either turn there or look at the board, and it said that God called him a mighty hero, right? The angel of the Lord came to him as a messenger and said, you're a mighty hero. Say mighty hero. Mighty hero. Now this is when Gideon didn't feel like a mighty hero, did he? Nope. And so what God was calling him was not based on how Gideon felt or thought about himself. And we know that the word says that we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. And you might not feel like more than a conqueror, but if God says you're more than a conqueror, you might as well just go ahead and activate that and access it by faith and say I'm more than a conqueror even though I don't feel like it. Amen. That's good news. It's good preaching too, even if I say so myself. Hallelujah. Why? Because we're cutting through some of these, 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 these strongholds and these bondages and these yokes that have held you captive for years. Glory. Say more than enough. You know where we're going to take you today? We're going to take some of you beyond your paycheck. We're going to take some of you beyond the income that you receive, however you receive it. All right? Now, you can, you, can, you can activate this and access this by faith. Or you can sit there and say, it can't be so, and you'll be just like the man in the Bible who said, if God himself would open up windows of heaven, it couldn't be so. And the, and the prophet of God said, you'll see it, but you won't partake of it. Or you can just say, I receive it. <laughs> Amen. I'm excited. Here we go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So then remember in verse 14, the Lord said this. He said, go with the strength you have. Say that with me. Go with the strength you have. Because some of you feel like you don't have enough strength. Some of you feel like you don't have any more to give. Some of you feel like, I'm doing all I can do. Some of you are burning the candles at both ends and in the middle too. Go with the strength you have. And then, you know, Gideon began to make excuses. He said, how can I rescue Israel? He said in verse 15, he said, my clan is the weakest in the whole tribe of Manasseh, and I am the least in my entire family. I'm the, I'm the least of the least. God knows how to make the least of the least the greatest of the greatest. He know, he, God knows how to take the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. But you've got to be ready for that. And you've got to receive that by faith. And you've got to be willing to be one of those that takes things that look foolish. People may have called you even a fool. And you've got to be willing to be in a place to receive God's word by faith and say, you know what? I may have felt like a fool, I may have been called a fool, I may have done foolish things, but I can operate in the wisdom of God and go from the bottom to the top. Amen. Amen. You know what? We've all acted like a fool sometime in our life. Amen. Don't look at me in those religious tones. <laughs> you don't know me, brother. <laughs> Then, you know what God does? He takes Gideon, he says, hey, put an army together, right? He puts an army together, and he puts together 32,000 men, right? And um, God says, that isn't going to work. And as you know, he tell, tells him, he says, hey, send all those who are afraid, all the fearful, tell them to go home. All right. You know, when you're physically up against an army that as described in the Bible, that they looked like locusts, there were so many of them. You're thinking, I'll take all the guys I can get. I don't care if they are a little scared. We need some numbers here, right? And God says, no, that's too many. And you know the story, probably. And then he, he got down to 10,000. He said, no, that's too many. He says, go tell them, drink water. You know that. And uh, now... All those that, you know, lapped up the water like a dog, he says, go home. All those who brought water up their hands, he says, keep them. Well, that meant there was only 300. He may, he may, Gideon, in his mind, may have thought at some point, God got something wrong here. I mean, come on. Now we have 300, and they have numerous. Uh, I heard reports, um, scholars say that they estimated uh, hundreds of thousands of men. I mean, he said, you know, the, the, the camels looked like sand on the seashore. There were so many camels. And the men looked like locusts. 
that's a lot of that's a lot of of people um, of uh, that you're supposed to go defeat. And you know, in the back of his mind, he's still weak, and he still comes from a weak clan, a weak family. But remember, God in the beginning, God calls those things to be not as though they were. And God takes those things, and he, God sees the end from the beginning, and the beginning from the end, and he says, you're a mighty hero. He's, calling it, he's lifting Gideon up out of the weakest clan, and the weakest one in the clan, the weakest one in his family, and saying, I'm calling you a mighty hero, even if you don't feel like it, even if you don't look like it, even if nobody else calls you that, I'm calling you that. And the moment God calls you a mighty hero, guess what? You're a mighty hero whether you like it or not. But how you access that and how you activate that is by faith. And that's what Gideon had to do. Now, he says, get up. Gideon says, get up. Why? Because he hears what's going on. And the Lord has him hear that, those people talking about that man's dream. And he tells his men, get up. For the Lord has given you the victory over the Midianites. All of a sudden, Faith was activated inside of Gideon. And you may be going through the motions of faith, but all of a sudden when faith rises up on the inside of you, and all of a sudden you get this excitement, and you shout, get up, praise God, we're going to overcome this, this stinking battle, we're going to overcome this sickness, we're going to overcome this, this debt. We're, you, know, you don't have to live in debt your whole life, and some people think you are trapped by debt, and you feel like you'll never get out from underneath debt. You will get out from underneath debt in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. You know what? You know, and, and then you know the story, we looked at it, but you know, they stood in their positions, right? Now, let me just fast forward, right? Because God did deliver them, why? Right? Because there was a panic, and they began to fight against each other, and they began to kill each other, and then the ones that didn't kill each other fled to a faraway place, okay? Now, I want you to see this, because this is what the Lord was speaking to me this week. Gideon had 32,000 men because that's how he saw himself, okay? But God was going to show Gideon that he didn't need more people to be powerful. You see, people with a poor self-image need things. Need others to make them feel good about themselves. Amen. Because we operate and we function out of the image that we have inside of us. Now, I know it's going to get quiet. Because to go somewhere different, things need to be revealed about yourself first. And that's exactly what God was doing with Gideon here. He was telling Gideon, you don't need 32,000. You don't even need 10,000. 300 will do it. Because Gideon was being taken beyond himself and beyond his own inner image. And he was creating in Gideon an image of God inside of him. And he was creating an image that said, you know what? There is no logical, possible, physical way to do this without the supernatural power, strength, and wisdom of God. Amen. And that's where we're taking you today, even where your own paycheck is concerned. Amen? <laughs> Gideon wanted 32,000 men, but God told him 300 men will do. And you can, in fact, win this battle against hundreds of thousands of men. And God did that, didn't he? God showed himself strong, didn't he? Now let me talk to you just a minute about Jacob. Jacob was a trickster. And Jacob got tricked. It's interesting how tricksters get tricked. People who think they're slick 
always get slicked. <laughs> they do. I had a friend, and he thought he was so slick. And he would try to sell, you know, like a car, and it had all these problems. And he would try to act like it didn't have all these problems. And I would look at him and go, what are you doing? You know, and he just thought he was slick. You know, he was always the first one that got slicked. <laughs> he would buy things that were pieces of junk. And I'd go, why did you buy that? Well, you know, I, I thought, you know why? Because he was used to de being, deceiving people, and he would get deceived. That works that way, by the way. Honesty and truth is always the best thing. It's always the best way to behave. And sometimes just being bluntly honest hurts. But it's the right way to do it. Amen. And so, I don't want to go into it too deep, but I, all, I want to look at this. Actually, let's go ahead and look at it. Let's go over to Genesis, please. Genesis chapter 30. You know what? If we camp out here, that's just fine. The Lord gave this to me just this morning as I was putting my tie on. Genesis chapter 30. Now you remember the blessing. Jacob tricked, but, he got, he, but the blessing was on his life. That should tell us something too. Amen. He may not have done everything right, but the blessings flat out the blessing. Amen. Glory to God for his grace and his mercy. Now, we see here, Jacob meets Rachel, right? And he desires to have Rachel for his wife, but Laban tricks him, doesn't he? And then he says, you know, I'll work for you seven years, and he tricks him, work for me another seven years, and, and, and man, years and years and years are clicking by pretty fast here. And all of a sudden, Jacob knows that he needs to break out from underneath this. And I believe this is a picture of how the, the systems of the world try to entrap people with the blessing of God on their life. Boy, I want you to get this. Amen? Say, I'm blessed. So now, you're blessed, but you're living in this world. And have you ever felt, don't raise your hand, but you ever felt like, you know, what is the deal? If I'm so blessed... You know, the pastor says I'm blessed. I read that I'm blessed and all this. You know, why am I struggling so bad here? Okay? Well, I believe there's going to be some breakthroughs in some areas here. Because just as Gideon had to trust God, right? See, the image of what happens is this. Let's say you're worth $10 an hour to somebody. All right? Let's say you're worth $50 an hour. Whatever the dollar amount may be. Maybe you're worth $250 an hour, okay? That image of what someone is willing to pay you begins to be in, 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 in grafted and burnt into you. And all of a sudden, there is a border and there's a boundary put up in your life. And then you say, well, okay, well, I've, you know, I've, I've, you know, most I've ever made was, you know, $30 an hour or something to that effect, whatever it is, whatever the dollar amount, I don't care. I don't care if it's $1,000 an hour. Well, what I'm saying is you begin to live out of that image that's inside of you. And in order to go beyond that, beyond that is the blessing. Thank God for your job. Now, I'm not saying that's not a blessing, but I mean the blessing isn't containable. Because there was more land than could even hold Abram and Lot's. They were living in excess. They were flourishing. Why? Because of the blessing. And when you get a hold of this, and you begin to allow this image to increase on the inside of you of the blessing of God, it attracts favor. It attracts wealth into your hands. And people will begin to do things for you and give things to you. And, and you begin to increase in ways that you didn't even And God begins to give you witty ideas, inventions, insights, concepts, and understandings, and the ability to carry them out. 
Glory to God. And what happened here is Jacob got tired of living under Laban's thumb. And he knew that he had to break out of the paycheck that he was getting from Laban. And to the point where Jacob told Laban, I don't even want anything else from you. He said, how about this? Anytime any of your cattle produce any offspring that are spotted, speckled, or striped, how about I get those? Laban thought he had them. And the world thinks they've got you. And what happened is all of a sudden, Laban's going, because <laughs> remember, he's a trickster. And Laban knew that as long as Jacob was there, he would be blessed because he knew the blessing was on his life. Woo! And so what happens? The word of the Lord comes to Jacob and says, this is what I want you to tell him. Tell him anything that's, that, that any of the animals that he has that produce spotted, speckled, and striped, tell him that you want those and that'll be your pay. Now, in Laban's mind, he knows, I mean, Jacob's mind, he knows that isn't very much. That really doesn't happen naturally, on its own, genetically. But God can change genetics. Is he not God? Did he not create genetics to begin with? Now I'm going beyond your genetic code right now, right now. Whoa, 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 whoa. All right? So what happened? So, you know, you may have had a report, you know, and, and you know, go to the doctor. Well, anybody else heart, die of heart disease? Oh, yeah. Who? My dad. Who else? My uncle. Who else? My grandpa. Who else? This bro. Oh, boy. Get ready. Right? Say, not me. Not me. Say, new bloodline. new bloodline. Some of you don't even have any idea what I'm talking about. But you will. Just stay here long enough. You'll get it. Some of you say, well, was there mental disease in your family? Oh, then that's why you're thinking like that. That's why you're having the problems you're having. No, no, no. You have the mind of Christ. Hallelujah. And so you see here, Laban thinks he's got Jacob. And Laban knew the blessing. He identified it and knew it. And we can see here in Genesis chapter 30... Verse 27, Laban said unto him, I pray thee, if I have found favor in thy eyes. Tarry, for I have learned by experience that the Lord has blessed me for your sake. There are some people around you that are being blessed for your sake. I'm going to stand up here and tell you I've seen this at work in my life. And I've had people identify it and say, you know what? That was just God. That was a God sent. That doesn't happen normally. I'm not bragging on myself. I'm just telling you, when the blessing of God's on your life, that's the life you should expect. People don't just pay you for, for, for that. And people don't typically, and that typically doesn't happen. And, and this, how does that happen? That's what we should expect. That we should be accustomed to that because of the blessing. And we don't pat ourselves on the back and say, oh, wow, look at up." No, it's just the blessing of God. It's his goodness. It's his mercy. It's his grace on our life. And he has chosen to put that blessing on my life. And I'm accessing that blessing, and I'm activating that blessing by faith. And I'm going to expect good things to happen in my life every day of my life. Amen. Uncommon favor. Amen. Glory. And you see... That's what happened here. All of a sudden, Laban, he learned by experience, being around Jacob, that things were different, and they were different good. Amen. And uh, he goes on, and he says, For it was little which thou hast before I came, and it is now increased unto a multitude, and the Lord has blessed thee since my coming. And now, when shall I provide for my own house also? And he said, What shall I give thee? And Jacob said, Thou shalt not give me anything. Mm. That sounds like somebody else in the Bible. 
Abraham said, let no man say that thou hast made me rich, but God. He would even take a shoelace from those kings. A, sh a little shoelace, a little leather strap for his foot. Nope, don't want it. Amen. Let no man say they've made me rich, but God. Let no man say that we've defeated these Midianites, but God. 300 men, just go with the strength you have and stand in position. You see this? Do you see how God desires to show himself strong on your behalf? But you've got to break out of that inner image. That $30 an hour image. That $10 an hour image. That $100, whatever it is. It could be an image not only financially, it could be an image of sickness, an image of heart disease, an image of arthritis, an Im image of glaucoma, whatever it is. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you know what happened, right? Jacob took those rods as the Lord had told him, and he put them in front of the, wa the, the watering hole, right? And every time they'd go to drink, it happened. Like, look at that. And I'm telling you, that's why you put the Word of God in front of you. You remind you that you're blessed. Put it in your car. Put it on your phone. Put it on your mirror. Hold on. Okay. And, and, you know, I was in somebody's house who was uh, suffering physically. And I walked in their house, used the restroom. I was, I was there. And right on the mirror, talked about the image of God on their mirror. That blessed me. Amen? And, and some of these things Christians don't even think about doing. They come here, they say amen, they can even get excited, and they don't even appropriate what they hear. You've got to keep the word before you. You've got to keep it going in. Why? Because there, there's a struggle. The enemy's trying to portray a negative, false image to you all the time. And he's trying to work on your mind and trying to beat you down because you have an adversary who is the devil seeking whom he may devour. Trying to get you weak in the knees, if you will. Trying to get that image on the inside of you broke, busted, disgusted, and sick. And barely get along, Avenue. Amen. Say more than enough. And you know, Jacob, what happens in verse 31 says, and he heard the words of Laban's sons, saying, Jacob hath taken away all that was our father's, and of that which was our father's hath he gotten all of his glory. Every one of those animals began to produce spotted, speckled, and striped Jacob said, don't give me anything. I'm just going with what the word of the Lord says. If your boss didn't pay you anything, God can see to it that you own the company. Don't get all worked up. Don't get in strife. Don't get out of faith and in fear. You get in fear, now you're dependent on that check. You get the check, and then all of a sudden the bill comes in, and the bill's bigger than the check, and you go, what in the world is this? Well, we know we increased our rates. Don't limit yourself to that check. Amen. And all of a sudden, Jacob owns it all. Jacob owned it all. And Laban couldn't, couldn't, couldn't take credit for it, because he, he hadn't been paying him. All of a sudden, Everything began to go Jacob's way on that way that he said, hey, just give me, what you, just give me this. Laban thought he had him entrapped. And the very thing that he thought had entrapped him broke Jacob out. It set him free. It made him financially independent from Laban, but all the while 100% dependent on God. And I'm telling you this for your sake. Whatever, 
whatever paycheck maybe you, you have or you receive. I'm saying just don't limit what God can do to and for you. God can give you one idea that can cause you to increase in great ways. Amen. He can cause you to come into favor like you've never experienced before in your life. But the only way you're going to walk into that is not by accident. It's by purpose. Faith purpose. Amen? Hallelujah. Now let me keep going here. And, and got a couple. Ooh, ooh, I didn't know it was that late. Few, five minutes. All right? I'll do my best. So we can remain st- strong and calm when things don't look so good in the natural. I was going to title my message, Strong and Calm. Amen? Why? Well, you see, and I made mention of this two weeks ago when I was closing. Fear is a spirit, okay? But guess what? Faith is a spirit, and faith is greater than fear. Amen? And the Bible says in 2 Corinthians that we have the same spirit of faith. And you can't deal with the spirit of fear naturally, okay? You see, spirit of fear is what kept Israel from going into the promised land. And when you go to receive the promises that God has given you, the spirit of fear starts, right? And it starts trying to, to, trying to get you to stay stagnant, try to get you to stay where you're at. You know, you're, you're, you're never going to get that. You're never going to get ahead. You know, people are going to laugh at you. Faith doesn't work. Faith is too radical. Uh, you know, you've got it all wrong. God's not like that. You know, the blessing, you know, that you read about with Abraham and Jacob and Isaac and all those, you know, that's real. You know, that was in Old Testament. Yeah, you know, you no, know, the blessing is just a spiritual blessing. It's not a physical, natural, uh, material blessing. Yes, it is. Okay. Because God wants to do exceedingly abundantly above all you ask or think, right? According to the promise, according to the power that works in you. Amen? But what happens is the spirit of fear works day and night to try to get you to back off of your faith. Okay? And, and Israel's promise was on the other side of what they had heard. Did you get that? Because remember, 10 came back and said this factual report, but 2 came back and said we are well able, right? And so when you side with those who say you're well able to overcome... The, then you got something working for you. That's why I said it's very important on Thursday. I said it's very important what leadership and who, who's your pastor. Because your pastor should tell you that you can and you will overcome. By the blood of the Lamb and by the word of your testimony. We, we sang about it this morning. Amen. You're an overcomer through Christ Jesus. Glory to God. And what, 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 what happens is people become overcome by the spirit of fear. And how we overcome the spirit of fear is by faith. Amen. And this is why God has given you faith. Um, in Romans 8.15 says, the spirit of bondage, We have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Uh, New Living says, So you have not received the spirit that makes you fearful slaves. See, fear enslaves you, that you will not break out. Instead, you, have, you received God's spirit when he adopted you as his very own children, and now you call him Abba, Father. In 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, says God has not given me the spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. Right? Say, I have not been given spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. Now, it's up to you to develop your faith, because faith is going to work for you. Okay? But you've got to develop your faith. Now, there's, more, uh, there, there's, there's a way that you can develop your faith to a point where fear um, doesn't have control of your life anymore. Amen. And that's where God desires for you to be. And the more developed you are in faith, the faster you will see it at work in your life. Okay? I said the more developed you are in your faith, the faster you will see it at work in your life. I'm fitting a lot in five minutes, so stick with me, okay? Now, faith, the Bible says, is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen, right? We know that in the the Word. And what happens is faith brings about the substance of things you hope for, but fear brings about the substance of things you fear. Okay? Now, fear attracts the curse, and fear brings the substance of the curse into your life. But faith attracts the blessing, and faith brings the substance of the blessings into your life. Did you get that? Those are some nuggets right there. Now, Jesus, every time Jesus showed up, or even angel of the Lord, you know what they said? Fear not. Because as soon as you, if you're in fear, you're not going to receive what he's about to say to you. And you definitely won't do it, even if you hear it. So get the fear out. Amen? And Jesus said, why are you so fearful? Right? To more than one occasion. And fear keeps people from receiving the promises. The Bible says in Luke chapter 21, 26, that men's hearts fail them for fear. And our heart doesn't need to be failing us for fear. 
And there are people who even commit suicide because they're afraid that they're never going to have what they once had. But not you. Not anyone in this church in Jesus' name. Glory to God. There's always hope. Glory to God. Now, sin will cause a person to be more aware of their flesh. And it keeps people carnally minded. That's why sin is a trap. Because it keeps people carnally minded. It keeps people more aware of their flesh than it does of their faith, right? And the righteousness, consciousness that God has put into us. Amen. Because God desires us to have a righteousness consciousness. Amen. And righteousness consciousness will, will cause you to be in a place where you can receive his grace. Amen. Now, faith is used to move impossible things in your life. We know that from Mark chapter 11, right? Verse 22, 23, and 24. Now, there are spiritual laws. I'm going to say this close. I'm about two minutes away. What is a spiritual law, and is there such a thing as a spiritual law? Go to Romans chapter 8, verse 1. I believe this will be close to the last verse that I give today. <laughs> Romans chapter 8, verse 1. Go there quickly, quickly, quickly. Hallelujah. Did you get something out of this? Okay, stick with me. There's a little bit more here. Romans chapter 8, verse 1. Therefore, therefore now no condemnation to the which are in Christ Jesus. Walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus, the Amplified Bible says, the law of our new beginning has made me free from the law of sin and death. Now, we're familiar mostly with natural physical laws, such as the law of gravics, uh, law of gravity, and the law of physics. That was physics together, gravics. <laughs> gravics. But most people don't think about spiritual laws. Say spiritual laws. Spiritual. Most church people don't even think about spiritual laws. They're aware of, of natural laws. They've been taught that in their physics classes and things like that. And yeah, that, that's great and fine and dandy. But the Bible here, and Paul talks about the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death. Praise God. Now our head or our mind can't believe what our heart and our spirit can believe. ooh -wee. Our head or our mind cannot believe what our heart or our spirit can believe. So if you try to believe with your head, you aren't going to get there. If you try to believe with your mind, your intellect. Now God gave us those things. Glory God. Hallelujah. But he didn't give you a renewed mind when you got born again. He gave you a renewed spirit. And we renew our mind to the word of God. Amen. Our mind goes, well, that don't make sense. Righteous. I don't feel any more righteous than yesterday. But you come here, you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're made righteous in the eyes of God. Your spirit, man, is made alive unto God. Amen. And what happens is God has made us in his image and after his likeness. And our spirit now has a super ability. Did you get this? a supernatural ability. And this supernatural ability gives you the ability to believe beyond natural predictions. Glory. See, the natural prediction was Gideon and his little 300 boys weren't going to make it against this mighty army. Right? Natural predictions said that, that Laban was going to have Jacob as a slave forever. But what happened is he went beyond natural predictions. How did he do that? By faith in God. Cain and Aleb. Cain and Aleb. And woo! Got the two wrong people. Joshua and Caleb went beyond the natural prediction and they went into the promised land and I'm telling you this you can naturally look at things and predict things the world can and so on and so forth but God is calling for a church to rise up 
that is willing to go and live and walk by faith, from faith to faith, the just shall live by faith, to go beyond what has naturally been predicted for your life. And a lot of people are living out of an image inside of them that has been naturally predicted to them by someone else. A lot of, a lot of us are. Well, you know, because you've done that, this, or because you haven't done this, this. And I believe that God desires to take you far beyond that. And how this happens is by faith. Faith where? Faith in your head, no faith in your spirit. And we'll look at this perhaps next week or the week after more closely. And I may, might even share a little bit about quantum physics. Because if you look at quantum physics, you begin to look at how the classical set of physical laws can be superseded and are superseded in quantum physics. And they react based on those who observe them and what they believe in the natural. Listen, we're talking natural things here. Praise God. you get something out of this? Stand to your feet, please. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, I've spoken your word. It has gone into the ears, into the hearing, and into the hearts of the people here today. I pray, Lord, that the seed that was sown today will produce a great harvest in their lives. That they're going to take a hold of even as things were spoken under the unction of the Holy Spirit, things such as genetic change. I thank you, Lord, that there are those here that are grabbing a hold of that. And people that have had an image that has limited them in their life, that today, that they're seeing beyond that image. They're seeing the limitless bountiful, flourishing greatness of who you are and the blessing that you have put on man and the blessing that is available to your children. Lord, I pray that the world sees our lives and recognizes that blessing just as Laban recognized it on Jacob's life. And they desire to partake in that same blessing, giving us the opportunity to lead them to Jesus Christ. Lord, thank you that you're not about trying to create a great religion in the earth, but you are about relationship in the earth between God and man. And if there's anyone here that can't say confidently that they have a relationship with Jesus Christ, I'd ask you to raise your hand boldly right now. And by raising your hand, you would say, I desire to have that relationship with Jesus. I desire to be called children of God. I desire to be in the family of God. If you're here and you've never done that, I want to give you that opportunity because somebody gave me that opportunity many years ago. Saints of God, those who have made that commitment already, I ask that you be praying for those who are, or who are thinking about making this decision this morning. There, there may be a little bit of a, a challenge right now inside of you saying, listen, I really don't know. I don't, want to, I don't know what I'm subscribing to here. You're not subscribing to nothing other than saying, I need a Savior. It's Jesus and desire to have him as my Lord. Talking about what's called a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. It's called being born again. It's been joked about. It's been talked about. It's been laughed about in movies. But there is a reality of who Jesus is. If you're here, you 
decide to make that decision this morning, I'll give you the opportunity in just a moment more. I'd like to hear more people praying for those who are making this eternal decision. It's a big, big, big decision for people. Praise you, Jesus. Thank 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 you, Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Okay, everyone looking at me. I don't know if people raise their hand or not. I did things differently. The Lord just said, keep your eyes closed. So we're going to do something because maybe some people raised their hands. Maybe they didn't. But we're going to pray together as a body. We're going to pray what's called the prayer of salvation. And if you're here and you raised your hand or if you're here and you didn't raise your hand, you wished you would have raised your hand, the Bible says that if you confess Jesus with your mouth, and you believe in your heart, you can be saved. Pray this after me. Heavenly Father, I come to you in your Son's name, Jesus. Jesus, I believe that you're the Son of God, that you died on a cross for my sins. I receive you as my Lord, and I make you the Savior of my life. I will live for you from this day forward. I will call you my Lord, my Savior. Jesus, live big in my life. Holy Spirit, fill me. activated and accessed salvation by faith and everybody says amen praise God Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. praise God prayer couples if you come forward at this time if you need prayer in any area of your life Please feel free to come up here and see one of the prayer couples to pray with you. They know how to pray faith. Praise God. Remember, the Bible says you're blessed. And the blessed are the head and not the tail. The blessed are above and not beneath. The blessed are blessed going in and the blessed are blessed going out. And everything the blessed set their hand to prospers. And the blessed are the lenders, not the borrowers. You're good looking. You're dismissed. We'll see you Thursday. Praise God.